Good evening everyone. Happy Sabbath. I am presenting from just a spot in nature and the sun is almost setting and yeah there's a beautiful view and it just really reminds me to be still and know that he is God. Um, as I was sitting here um, I noticed this piece of uh, it's a it's a weed, but it, it does make a flower. This is what the flower looks like and I looked at it and I realized it's busy seeding so these little plumes are actually the seed pods. You wouldn't be able to see it unfortunately um, Are the little seed pods and I was looking at it and I was looking at this flower and I thought usually people would consider this the prettier one of the two, right? this would be the one you'd go and pick because it's bright and it's yellow and it's colorful and this one just looks like it's dying but the more I thought about it I thought perhaps God sees this piece of dying flower as incredibly beautiful because what's happening here as this flower is busy seeding it is dying and it is I want to use the words it's dying to self so that it can use all its energy to create these amazing intricate seed pods and eventually let that fall down so that new flowers can grow and I just thought it's a piece of, of dying weed and it is sacrificing all its energy in order to bring forth seed or fruit right and I thought maybe God wants us to be a little bit more like this piece of weed where we're dying to self, giving all our energy um, for the benefit of others, for the reseeding, um, for sowing seeds for his kingdom and for bearing fruits. So anyways, that's um, just I thought a little piece of nature that I wanted to share. but. It is not really the entirety of my message um, this evening. So um, before we delve into our message, let's close with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you so much for this beautiful piece of landscape that when we are just still, we can sense your presence and know that you are near. And all it takes is just to put the distractions away, to just be still and know that you are God. Lord, thank you for carrying us through another week. Life can often feel like a battlefield, Lord, but I know that we are fighting underneath your banner, which is the banner of victory. Lord, as I present this message, I ask that you will put your words in my mouth and that you will please hide me in the shadow of your cross and that this message will bear fruit. It is a powerful message, Lord, and I know that if we would imply it in our life, um, we will reap great benefits. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for Jesus Christ that came to show us the way of life and to show us how to walk with God. I praise your name for that, Lord. You are our great teacher and our savior. Amen. All right, so I'm going to read out of Matthew chapter four. And as you may know, this is um, the chapter on the temptation of Jesus. So I'm just going to read all of it really, so from verse 1 to verse 11, and I do urge you to um, open your Bibles and follow with me. Alright, so it reads as follows. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil takes him up into the holy city, and sets him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. 
But Jesus said to him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil takes him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and said unto him, All these things I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus to him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So the first verse that I just want to highlight and bring out is verse um, verse 2 that says, verse 2 and 3, where it talks about Jesus after 40 days, he was um, a fasting, he was hungered, and then the tempter came to him and gave the first temptation. Satan will tempt you when you are tired, when you are burnt out, when you're alone, and when your mind is clouded, when you're physically weak. That is when he will make his move. And there's a lesson in that, and I do believe that is also why Ellen White gave us, um, through inspiration, the health message. Um, so that our bodies can be stronger, to recognize the strategies of Satan. But, yeah, that being said, um, we need to be watchful when we realize that we find ourselves in a weak place, um, when we sense our own weakness, our own physical weakness, that is when you should pray. And Ellen White um, writes as well um, that you can read this in Steps to Christ, the chapter on the privilege of prayer. And she says that when we feel the least to pray, when we're too tired or we feel too far away from God, that is when we should pray because that is when Satan wants to make his move. Paraphrase. Um, yes, this is also it is also a good um, thing to memorize scripture, and I think we should memorize scripture daily so that when those times of weakness comes, we have the scripture in our minds again to use it as weapons against uh, Satan's strategies. And uh, this is what Jesus did. In he was weak. Um, um, he was busy walking with God for 40 days in the desert in prayer. And um, in this little piece out of Spirit of Prophecy, she writes that during these 40 days, he had visions of, um, um, of the work that God had outlined for him. And yeah, how um, he's going to break Satan's power over fallen and tempted humans. And he saw himself healing the sick, comforting the hopeless, cheering the desponding. So he was busy having visions in prayer um, for these 40 days. But after that, the vision passed away. And then, with strong craving, Christ's human nature called for food. Now it was Satan's opportunity to make his assault. But Christ was ready, and so we can be ready. Um, Jesus answered with, it is written, right? And this is exactly what we should do. And something I noticed when I studied this part, um, this section out the past week, was that Jesus resisted three times. And I think that is a number to remember because often we do resist right <laughs> when Satan says um, I would just have one little block or one little slice or whatever I'm um, just using an example we're easy to say no my body is a temple of God okay so we got our one win right but then Satan comes the second time and the third time and then often we are overthrown but we have to resist the devil up to three times and I believe that after the third time he will flee from you and your soul will be secure um, and this is what we see what happened to Jesus um, he actually recognized that this is Satan that's trying to overthrow him and he said get behind me um, yeah, um, for it is written again a third time for it is written you will worship the Lord thy God and him only you will serve and then the devil left him. And then what happened? Behold, angels came and ministered to him. 
So I want to page to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. It says, uh, it's talking about the angels, and it says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? The angels are there to help us. And if we just continue to resist the devil, there will come a turning point where the devil will flee us. He can't do anything to overthrow us because we are standing on the word of God. And then the angels will come to minister to us. So whatever it is that might be triggering you to give into that temptation, maybe because you're tired or you're feeling alone um, or you're hungry and that piece of food that you know you shouldn't eat um, is looking really good, um, we can remember if we just resist for a little while, then afterwards the angels will come, they will minister to us and they will give us the strength to endure and they will also give us the comforts that we need. And I've taken this lesson to heart and I have a personal battle that I'm struggling with um, where I really need to learn to overcome and fight back and allow Christ to work in me to overcome this battle. And I've taken this lesson to heart and I've tried it out. And what I found so beautiful is God has been placing verses in my mind to use against the temptations of the devil. So when the devil comes with a lie, like, oh, um, you're alone in this, you're never going to overcome this, I have the verse, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And then the thing is, the temptation comes again, but oh, but that's just this time it wouldn't matter. And then it comes, then another verse comes and says, that reminds me, or a paragraph, and it reminds me that everything will um, be written down and there's an account in heaven. And again, that I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength, or that my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And then the third time again, I have a different verse. And then after that, usually my mind is switched, I'm focused on something else, I've forgotten about the trigger, and I've moved on, and I've found new strength. So I do urge you, resist the devil. This is in, uh, in James, actually. Have I written it down? Let's see if we can find it in James. I think it might be in James chapter 4. But the verse says, Resist the devil and he will submit to God. Let me just say it. <laughs> submit to God. Resist the devil and he will free, flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. I urge you to claim that verse, to continue resisting the devil with the word of God and you will see that you will find the victory. Turn your heart to God, submit to him, tell him in this moment of temptation that Lord, I don't want to give sway, my heart is yours and I give my heart, I give my will, I give my desires over to you to continue doing your good work, to continue on this path of salvation, on the narrow way, please keep me in the narrow way and give me victory and I promise you he will because the promise stands that um, he will help the humblest cry who is asking for help to overcome sin. Let's pray. Lord thank you so much again for Jesus Christ who has overcome sin, who has shown us the path of salvation and has shown us the steps in which we can, can walk. You are truly our shepherd Lord. And I know by following you, we will be safe. By following you on this narrow path, we will reach heaven. We can't go otherwise. Lord, I ask um, that you will please um, give us, through the power of the Holy Spirit, a new power, Lord, in the church to overcome sin. I ask for the Holy Spirit to convict us of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment and that you will help us overcome, that you will give us, please, a spirit to overcome, Lord. Um, I also ask that you will bless our minds with your word, that you will please help us to memorize scripture so that we can use it as our sword to overthrow the devil. Thank you, Lord. I know we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Amen. <laughs>
van u mij hier, hier, ek is hier om te werk, vir u mense vir u kerk, stuur my hier, ek wil gaan maar u my Ek weet, ek weet 